Do you believe in manifestation? Like you just, you just kind of. That's something that. I want to talk about and give your sure. guys thoughts on. Like I would the love law of attraction. A huge aspect of Absolutely. my life. Same, just like, same. That's how I feel like I've brought in all the clients and all the people that I've wanted to work with into my life. It's like I listen to their music all the time. Mm-hmm. I think about working with them mm-hmm. all the time, and then those opportunities just come out of nowhere through the people I meet. Chase wow, and I crazy. believe the same thing. How on the law of attraction. how would you say you attracted? Because I really want to get into this. How do yeah. you attract like the tour with Zoo? Because that's like a big this is a really entry fun story. level. This is a yeah. really fun story. So actually, my freshman year of college, I went to Coachella for my 18th birthday or 19th birthday. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it was my I was a freshman. Um, go to Coachella. See Zoo perform for the first mm-hmm. time. Had never heard his music. Before. Oh, cool. I'd heard Faded probably. Sure, like like on the periphery or whatever. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I was like, oh, that song's sick. But I didn't dive into who he was mm-hmm. as an artist. And then I saw his set because I was at Coachella, and I was like, oh my god, this is my new favorite artist. Who left? Who the fuck is Zoo? And that was in the era when he was not showing his face. Mm-hmm. He was very mysterious, which is kind of his whole uh, shtick, which is really cool. But he's phased out of that now. Um, so it's been cool to see that progression. But I saw him at Coachella. He became my favorite artist immediately and um, dove into finding and listening to all his music and found the label that he um, was under, which is Mind of a Genius Records, and basically became a big fan of just the label itself because they curated all these amazing artists like they and Clang Stuff and another one of my favorite artists, Carnival Blues, who's mm. very underrated, who I'll talk about later. But um Found their label and just became a fan of theirs. Two years later, went to a festival out in here in LA, skipped school for a couple of days to Worth come it. out to the Big festival. School, and I wore the merch of the label. So not Power people. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I wore the merch of the label to this festival out here in LA. And uh, me and my friend Mikey were out here just like running around the festival. Go to the bathroom. Mikey's taking longer. I go outside and then I see these other group of like three people with the jacket that I'm wearing. It's a mind of a genius music group jacket. I'm like, Oh, they, nobody else knows about this right. label. Like they must work at it. So I go up to him. I'm like, introduce myself, say, Hey, blah, blah, blah. I'm Henry. I'm a working as a photographer or anything, creative design. If like I can ever help with anything, just let me know. Like big fan of the label. Thank you guys for what you do. And they're like, yeah, for sure. And I'm not thinking right. of anything of it. Like, yeah, they'll never let me like come shoot a thing or whatever. But uh, fast forward to the summer, they're like, hey, do you want to come shoot they for the BET Awards? I was like, oh, my God, yes, I'd mm, love to. That's and crazy. Obviously, I did it for free because, like, in those yeah. early steps, like, I always would offer to do work mm-hmm. for free because I feel like that's a great way to get your foot in the door and just yep. kind of prove that, like, you're worth what you're getting into. And then it shows that you appreciate them as well. Right. Um, so that is how I got my foot in the door with a guy named Brando who was their creative director. Um, and then from there, it just kind of progressed of shooting more stuff. And then fast forward to the summer before my senior year, they hired me as an intern, just as a kind of creative stuff. So I do social media graphics, all that little kind of day-to-day content stuff. And uh, then and Zoo asked me to go on tour because he liked my work. That's sick, dude. So then on, on tour with Zoo, were you like photographing, you were doing like design like for like the Posters, yeah, so he had a creative director on tour with him who mm-hmm. was also doing photographer, uh, doing photo- photography. Um, but I just kind of filled in that yep. extra little totally gap so you can get extra coverage. So photo, video, anything here and there. And then, yeah. Dude, junior college, like that, that's so sick that you're doing it in college. Insane. I would feel like so proud of myself. It was dope. I was in college. Oh, God. And the content that you were making wasn't like, it wasn't like someone that was in college. If I can just like right. get gas Henry up for a second, it was <laughs> in the photos were so specific and very like, if you saw him, you're like, this is different. It was, it right. was noticeably like different stuff than what you were seeing on everyone else's feed. It was very stylistic and it was like the XX I took that. It's I also sick. Cause it. that right in this you know? it's yeah. also sick. Cause I'm kind of coming to this interview blind, but I know for a fact now that I've seen like probably your work. Cause I, I mean, I followed zoo forever, dude. Yeah. Like, oh, dude, he's the so best. good. He's so good. Yeah. I knew that Cola song, the, his remix of Cola. Mm-hmm. I just, I work out to that every time I work out. I play that right away. Get me in the zone. Dude, I love Zoo. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. He's so, he's like, everyone loves him. Mm. There's like, I've hardly found any haters of him. Mm-hmm. He's, his music is so unique and different. Um, these days it's um, becoming a little bit heavier and not as yeah. melodic as the stuff that I fell in love with. But him as an artist, he's such a genius when it comes to it's sound so and oh, everything he does is just so well, good. Were you in a lot of those studio sessions? Did you get to see him work? Um, I would work at the studio, but he would kind of have, I'd, I also, one thing that 
about me with artists is I always try to be the fly on the wall, Smart. Yep, yep. not be pressing anybody, you know, mm-hmm. when I Smart. first meet them just so they get comfortable with me. Um, because I feel like artists get so many people around them trying to like, yo, let me shoot for you. Let yeah, me do this yeah, for yeah, you. Yeah. Like, I just want to work with you. Mm-hmm. And they're like, it's overwhelming and it's just not a good look. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if there's one piece of advice for anybody who's like trying to work in music and trying to like get your foot in the door with artists who you can be around like kind of frequently, don't, push too much become a familiar face before you kind of approach them and just like smart get, just like that way they're comfortable with you they know you're around and then you can kind of work your way in mm-hmm. you gotta like be like that. respectful because i'm sure mm-hmm. like a lot of people that come up to them like really forward yeah. and that sucks let me let me know let, let me do this for you let right do that. Yeah, right totally. yeah so i always try to do the work around from the artists i find the manager i find mm. the pr person i find the agent hit them up all the time yeah. they like don't get that as much but right they're not getting the artists give them their respect and their time and their privacy and then the moment will happen when it's right that's sick dude mm-hmm. i love that and yeah dude like the manifestation like you know that you want to do that like uh, it's so do, important do you, do you write it down at all do you have like a book or a whiteboard i remember you i have i do vision boards once a year mm-hmm. um so i write it down i don't write it down all the time but when i have big goals yeah i write it down 